Armor Recognition Editorial Team is in Washington DC in the United States to cover AUSA 2019, the Association of United States Army Defense Exhibition. During three days, many companies from the US present the latest innovation and technology about programs of the US Army. For example, Bell Helicopter presents new generation of reconnaissance helicopter and also new robots and combat vehicles. David Hartzell, I'm President and CEO of Mac Defense. Mac Defense is a uh, wholly owned subsidiary of Mac Trucks Incorporated, the famous commercial truck manufacturer. We're also part of the AB Volvo group of, of commercial truck companies. Uh, Mac Defense is, is, was formed specifically to go after uh, military and government uh, type contract work, uh, where we use our commercial based truck platforms and we modify them to be used for military and or governmental applications. Mac Defense was awarded uh, in the middle of 2018 uh, the M917A3 program, uh, which is the heavy dump truck uh, contract for the U.S. Army. Uh, it's up, up to 683 trucks, uh, valuation of about $300 million uh, U.S. Uh, dollar uh, contract with the Army. Uh, basically what we did is we took a, a Mac granite chassis, which is a, a common chassis that we sell into uh, construction vocational applications throughout the world uh, and we modified it to meet the uh, Army's requirements uh, to fulfill the uh, needs for the M917A3. Mac Defense is uh, very proud to, to be back in service with the U.S. Army. Uh, Mac Trucks, our parent organization, uh, started service with the U.S. Army all the way back in World War I. Uh, in fact, it's our, our bulldog symbol, which is our corporate symbol for our company, uh, actually was founded and created uh, in World War I uh, when we delivered trucks uh, to the European theater and the British soldiers actually thought that our trucks looked like a bulldog and had the uh, durability and toughness of a bulldog and they, they nicknamed it the bulldog uh, and that image stuck with us and later became our corporate symbol so so our heritage uh, serving the military goes way back uh, so again uh, we're very pleased to be back again in service to the U.S. Army. So I'm Keith Lale, I'm the Vice President for Advanced Vertical Lift Systems at Bell. Uh, behind me is a full-scale mock-up of our offering for the United States Army's Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft Program. So this is the Bell 360 Invictus. So for our Bell uh, 360 Invictus, our offering for the United States Army's Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft, starting from the front of the aircraft, what you see is a very low drag fuselage, a tandem cockpit for two pilots, and actually you can have two pilots, one pilot, or it's optionally piloted. Uh, down here you see the 20 millimeter gun to provide suppressive fires along with a uh, common sensor payload. Uh, moving back on the aircraft, again you see the uh, two crew stations. We also have retractable landing gear so that we can minimize the drag of the uh, aircraft in forward flight. Continuing back, uh, first I'll point to the rotor system. Uh, the rotor system is a fully articulated rotor system uh, leveraging a lot of our technology from our 525 civil program. Uh, that aircraft has gone over 200 knots so we have high confidence in terms of meeting the speed requirement. Moving down, you see the lift sharing wing. So this wing carries a 50% uh, offload of the, for the aircraft at forward flight at 180 knots, which allows the main rotor system to be a very effective propulsor so we don't have to add another pusher proper propulsor to the aircraft to meet the requirements. Uh, continuing to the back of the aircraft, uh, under that cowling is the uh, GE's improved turbine engine which powers the aircraft along with a supplemental power unit that we've uh, brought to the aircraft. It's not just a, an auxiliary power unit but a supplemental power unit that you can plug in for additional horsepower uh, for the aircraft. And then as we move towards the back, we have a uh, active uh, horizontal uh, stabilizer that keeps the aircraft in the uh, best possible attitude for minimal drag at high speeds. And then at the very rear of the aircraft, you see a canted, ducted tail rotor. So what that does is that uh, provides extra efficiency at uh, high air speeds, as well as additional lift when you're in a hover, which is uh, one of the important uh, mission profiles for a reconnaissance platform like this. 
So all of those uh, uh, features that I mentioned, you know, in terms of uh, how you integrate that and pull all that together and optimize it in a uh, fly-by-wire flight control system. Uh, and last, uh, the integrated uh, munitions launcher, you can see the scribe line, uh, keeping all of the weapons inside the belly of the aircraft so that you um, minimize the drag and forward flight and only actuate the weapons out when you need to make an engagement. So we envision carrying Hellfires, rockets, and uh, air launched effects, and, and whatever other munitions the United States Army needs uh, within the belly of the aircraft. This program is called the Next Generation Squad Weapons Program. Uh, the U.S. Army has selected us to provide to them a weapon system, both in a rifle configuration and automatic rifle, with a unique uh, common cartridge that provides significantly more uh, performance with light weight. Uh, so we're going to be delivering to the Army 100 prototypes that are going to go through test and evaluation and inform their procurement decisions. So our technology is centered around a technology called case telescope ammunition. So traditional ammunition is in what's called a Coke bottle shape configuration and made out of brass. Our ammunition is housed in plastic and is cylindrical in nature. So we've been maturing this technology since 2004, starting first with our LSAT lightweight squad automatic technology and a 5.56 machine gun. We then scaled it to a 7.62. We then scaled that to a magazine-fed uh, carbine. From there, uh, these programs were all focused on uh, retaining lethality but significantly reducing weight. We then started to dial up the performance. We then provided a high performance program under uh, Next Generation Squad Weapon Technology Program, NGSWT. We just completed that uh, in February, which proved that a weapon system of this kind can perform and provide uh, the, the level of performance and requirements that the Army is asking for. Since that program was complete, the Army put out an RFP and we were selected to now provide rifles and automatic rifles using this ammunition. HK and Winchester are part of our team, so Textron Systems is the prime contractor and uh, as we project forward into scaling this into production and fielding, we've brought along world-class uh, members of both the small arms and the ammunition community. This weapon is a rifle, magazine fed with a uh, integrated fire control system them, as well as a um, suppressor at the end for uh, user feedback. This is a belt-fed automatic rifle, again with an integrated smart rail to enable fire control systems. It has the same suppressor on the end for controllability. Uh, both of these weapon systems utilize our case telescope ammunition. There are other competitors. We believe we're in a good position to perform and to prove to the Army that this technology is ready to transition. Yes, my name is uh, Keith Barkley. I'm the Director of Strategy and uh, uh, Global Strategy and Growth for General Dynamics. You asked a question about the Mobile Protected Firepower Program. We were honored to be selected by uh, the United States Army as one of two down selected in December to produce uh, 14 prototypes uh, of the Mobile Protected Firepower uh, System for the Army. And they will be delivered in March of uh, 2020. This is uh, designed uh, for uh, infantry brigade combat teams to provide lethality to that uh, formation in the Army. So the infantry brigade combat teams and uh, although it's still being refined uh, it's about a company of uh, tanks 14 uh, or so per brigade that would help provide the lethality for that formation. So our design was uh, a purpose-built vehicle so that uh, we could meet transpo transportability requirements for two on a C-17, and uh, it's a 105 millimeter cannon, and it's uh, very similar to uh, our Abrams turret on the inside. So there's commonality in training, commonality in logistics, and uh, 
it would be ready to go to the force and uh, be utilized. The next step for the program is delivery of the prototypes in March of 2020. So uh, the Army then would uh, compare and test all of the prototypes between us and uh, the other vendor and they will make a selection, we'd be down selection to go to production. Hi, my name is Jim Morrison from Jeep. And the idea of this new project with the Gladiator XMT concept is to introduce to the world what's capable with this great partnership with Jeep and AM General. This is phase one of a collaboration which brings two companies together which have a long history with having great military vehicles. As you may know, Jeep has its history started in 1941 with the uh, U.S. military looking for a light reconnaissance vehicle that became the, what everyone now knows as a Jeep. Willys and Overland brought a vehicle to the marketplace which was incredibly capable and changed the outcome of the, the uh, Second World War. So here we fast forward to 2019 and Jeep and AM General are together again and it, we're very pleased from Jeep that AM General is looking for the most capable mid-sized truck in the world and they picked our Jeep Gladiator for this concept. And they didn't just pick it for its name, they picked it for its incredible versatility, capability, and of course, its go anywhere, four wheel drive systems that it has. So this new Gladiator is great off-road, it's got um, 7,650 pounds of, uh, of trailer tow. You can put 1,600 pounds of payload in its eight-foot bed, and it has two uh, powertrains, both a V6 uh, gas engine and a three-liter uh, V6 eco diesel. So, great technology, great power, and of course, great four-wheel drive capability, all in this new Jeep Gladiator uh, XMT.